Okay, so how did you start to get interested in health and when did you decide you wanted to be a doctor? Oh, um, great question. I think it was like a confluence of things. Um, my, first of all, my dad is a type one diabetic. Um, so I grew up with this always in my house and in the, in, and always paid more attention to anything to do with diabetes. And it actually really helps me in dealing with patients because I know what it's like to go through these ups and downs that are a part of life for a type one. I mean, when I grew up, my dad didn't have a glucometer. They, they had, they, it, it was horrible. And today he's 76 with no complications. Wow, that's it's, fantastic. It's really unbelievable. Um, and, uh, we're, we're, you know, so that was one thing I think, um, my personality also really fits medicine. I, I like taking care of people and I love science, but you know, it was, and it was just like a natural combination. Um, and I particularly like taking care of people long-term. So I was definitely not going to be a surgeon because I'm, I'm really horrible in the OR and, uh, and and I think the last thing, no question, is that my sister had cancer when she was 11. And I think wow. that that whole experience of being in the hospital for a full year with her, um, going in for chemo like every few months, um, no, no, not every few weeks, I mean, um, was, uh, I guess, had a much bigger impact on me than I imagined. So yeah. it was, wow. I think the combination of these three things. Yeah, that's a lot of really good reasons. And I think a lot of doctors feel the same way. We got into this because we wanted to help people. So what was it like when you started to practice? Were you able to help people? Well, you know, you think you help people, right? I mean, you. I, I think most doctors are doing their best. And I think I was doing my best as well. Um, you know, I, I presented uh, that case at, at, uh, at the conference because this is like a really typical patient where he, he was a patient of mine before um, I started practicing medicine. And, um, and, you know, you think you're doing the right thing. You give them a lot of meds, you treat them with insulin, you treat them with everything at your disposal. And there are certain criteria that you meet that makes you a successful doctor. You know, is the LDL where it should be? Is the sugar where it should be? Is the blood pressure where it should be? So if you meet all those criteria, by the regular standards, you think you're doing a good job. So, you know, this is, I think people are in general um, feel like they have tools, but what we're really doing is continuing, we're managing disease. This is what we do. We, as practitioners, we don't really treat. We more mostly manage. I mean, surgeons, I think, probably do treat. Infectious diseases do treat. Um, but most of internal medicine is kind of maintaining or managing and hoping things won't get worse. But I think the beauty that happens when you discover that you can treat the root cause is that things actually get better. And because you don't, you don't, because you're treating the root cause and the root cause manifests as so many different things. When you are treating the sugar with low carb, you're also treating their mood. You also treat their skin. You also treat their joints. You treat all these, their sleep, all these other things that improve as kind of a, you know, a side effect of your treatment for diabetes. So it's a, it's a completely different thing. Yeah, it's really remarkable. So you mentioned that case and I, I'm so glad you put his picture in there. You refer to him as HK and it shows his starting point. Now, Am I safe to assume that that would have been nearly like a best case scenario in the conventional way of treating diabetes? Like you said, you're managing symptoms, you're trying to hit markers, you showed the laundry list of different medications that he was on, and you know, you did show some of his markers and they were okay, somewhat controlled. Would that have been the best case scenario of somebody in the conventional system before you change your understanding of treating the disease? Yeah, I believe so, because this was the guy we were talking about had 30 years of diabetes. And this is one of the things that because I, I have a specialty practice, because I'm an endocrinologist, I usually see people, uh, actually, I just looked at the data, on average, they've had diabetes for 11 years before they come and see me. So they are more uh, advanced, like this guy had 30 years. So it's, you know, there's 
there's a quite a, a range, but a, a lot of people have had diabetes for a long time and 30, 35 years. And, 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 and at that point, you need a whole bunch of medications to manage diabetes because, you know, at the beginning of diabetes, insulin is really high, but then diabetes presents when insulin levels start to drop because the pancreas can't keep up with that demand, right? But over time, it drops and drops and drops. And there, and that's when we have to treat with insulin in the conventional treatment. So, so you know, treating with insulin becomes kind of like this, the the normal, the standard for people who've had diabetes for such long standing, for so 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 long. So that's not going to be enough. And I I definitely understand that even before I you know my dive into low carb. I understood you got to also treat the insulin resistance so you could minimize the the amount of insulin because nobody yeah. likes to take insulin. And insulin makes you gain weight, makes you hungry. It's a pain in the butt. You have to check your sugars all the time. You have to inject yourself. Um, you know, it, it's it, you know it's, it puts you on a roller coaster um, of ups and downs, and um, and. And so, yeah, I, this guy was actually being treated with insulin once, um, long-acting insulin, an insulin shot every time he ate. And by the way, 25% of people in the United States are treated on insulin. Okay, that's a lot of people. 25% of the total population. Of the population of diabetics, yes. Got it, wow. Yeah, yeah, so it's of it's type 2 diabetics. Um, then this guy was on a GLP-1 agonist, which is, uh, you know, today is the big hit, big hit like Ozempic. Um, he was on Jardians, also a very uh, popular drug today, which lowers sugar through the urine. And he was on metformin and he was on Actos, which is now a less popular drug, but it's a drug that can use, can be very helpful. Um, so that's a lot of meds. For just the sugar, never mind all the other things, right? Because we treat yeah. each symptom differently. We treat the blood pressure, three medications. We treat the cholesterol. We treat everything, you know, the pains and the benign prostatic hypertrophy and blah blah blah. So the the the, the gastrointestinal disease, all of this needs a treatment. So we treat all of the symptoms and by with different meds. That's modern medicine. Wow. And you also hear that so many of the prescriptions we're writing are also to deal with the side effects of the drugs that have direct relationships to the actual disease. Were there lots of those as well? One more time, meaning, meaning that so, the... it, it seems like a lot of the prescriptions we're writing are not just yeah. to deal with the direct you know, disease that we're dealing with, but the drugs are being written to deal with side effects that came from the medications to begin with. Was there a lot of that going on as well? In, in this case, not so much. In this case, not so much. Okay. But, but he, even without that, he, I think he was like on 12 meds, you know? Wow. Wow. And, yeah. But in, in this particular case, not so much because yeah, I'm trying to think of, no, not that I can think of, but it, it does often happen. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So we're, we're, we're dealing with all of these symptoms and we're thinking that we're doing a really good job with this person. This is the standard classic care. When did you start to come across low carbohydrate diets and realize there might be a shift in paradigms? Um, I was really lucky to have a, a best friend uh, who um, had a website called a sweet life.org. It was a nonprofit and I was the medical director for it. But funny enough, it started out like a traditional medical diabetes website um, because she and her husband both had type one and it was a, an informational website. But what happened is that they started evolving over the years and dis they, they discovered the low carb movement way before I did. And they were, you know, telling me about it. And I was like, ah, of course you should treat low carb. And, you know, of course you should, you should avoid carbs. But because intuitively that makes sense. And I already, I was working way back in there in, in the Bronx I, and, and, and of course telling people to get off rice and, and think into it. But, but there's a really big difference between saying low carb and understanding all of the implications of that for real, right? And, and there's also a very big difference between saying low carb and keto because keto is a whole other ballgame. 
So, to, you know, one thing, so, so she, and, and then two patients at the same time sent to me. And anyway, what I'm saying is like, I, I feel bad to this day that I kind of like ignored her for a while, not ignored her. That's definitely not the word, but I just didn't understand the complexity of what she was saying, you know, because I was like, you know, yes, you know, it, it makes sense, but you don't understand that the layers that this implies. And then two patients sent me uh, the Sarah Holberg video, uh, how to uh, reverse diabetes by ignoring the guidelines. And wow, she was such an influence in my life. I, I, I really, I think uh, she's sorely missed and she, she was an amazing, amazing uh, person. Um, and, and I owe her so much actually for, uh, for really opening my eyes. And I, and what I needed was a doctor to say, it's okay. You know, like you, you need it. You, you, you don't want to feel like you're crazy. And, and when you have another doctor say, you know, I'm doing this with my patients and wow, I'm getting great results. It really had an impact on me. And then I, um, it kind of gave, it really gave me a lot of confidence, which is one of the things I really want to do now, which is I want to empower doctors to, to take the leap because I think a lot of people see the reasoning behind this and get it, but to take the leap to go against convention is a really hard thing to do. It is. And, and you need a lot of tools to do that. So, yeah. you know, I was very, very lucky that I had just opened my own diabetes center and I had freedom. I was, I was by myself. I did not have an institution telling me what to do because I, I, I was in Israel and I was kind of a little bit doing my, you know, I, I, because my Hebrew, you know, when I arrived was non-existent and I, I learned Hebrew. I now work all day in Hebrew, but like at the time, so anyway, I like kind of started my own thing and, and it really, actually before that I worked in a, in a private diabetes center too. And, but there I was like a conventional, conventional clinic. But what that clinic taught me is how to follow patients carefully, how to do it right, how to do the teamwork. Cause I was the director there. And I also, I was able to, to learn a lot about that, but I wasn't, I didn't have the, I didn't have the technique, right. I had the, I had all the outside, but I didn't have the meat of the, of, no pun intended. I didn't have the, the actual, you know, the treatment was wrong <laughs> or mostly wrong. We did some things right. But so, you know, so the once, because I was on my own, it was an amazing experience to just really do what you think is right. Of course, I had to go through a real revolution first. And that took me about a year because I had to read and read and read and feel like, you know, you have a lot of responsibility when you're gonna go against convention. Yeah. And I did, you know, accrue quite a bit of enemies, which is yeah. fine because, yeah. you know, it, that's the way it is. <laughs>